grazie per l'invito. Io ho nessuna autorità di parlare su Ben Guerre perché lui è morto nel 1984, io tenevo quattro anni, e sapevo niente di, del socialismo, del comunismo. Questo era l'anno dove io sono tornato con la mia madre in Germania e poi non ho perso anche il contatto con il comunismo italiano, ma anche con la lingua italiana. E perciò... Io voglio forse continuare in inglese perché è più facile di me se va bene con i colleghi. Il italiano e il tedesco parli in inglese, sei veramente l'espressione della globalizzazione. Sì, europeo. So, as I have no authority to, to talk about Berlinguer, but I have maybe authority to talk about um, the life of, of a young activist uh, of the left, and what I, feel, um, what I feel is the current challenge for the new left. I feel that, first of all, for me, Berlinguer, Berlinguer reminds me of a time where the left, even in Italy, uh, was part of a broader movement, of a broader people's movement. And I think that the challenge for us as, as, as left in Europe today is that sometimes we complain and we, we say, oh, the, the the left in Italy had this big tradition and now it's gone. But I think the first question we have to ask ourselves is, has the popolo della sinistra, has the popolo della sinistra vanished? I don't think so. It's the left that maybe has vanished a little bit in Italy. And so I think we should not try to seek the answer to our problems um, by maybe saying the people out there are not any more prepared um, to rally behind left ideas, I think it's the left that has failed um, on the people. And this is why I think we have to, to ask ourselves where our strategic errors have been in the past and certainly how we can correct them. And um, if we look at developments nowadays in Europe, we can see that certainly there's a lot of movement um, happening. We have the situation in Greece, but we also have very worrying developments in the United Kingdom or in France. But we can see that um, the idea of the end of history after uh, the so-called victory of capitalism has not materialized. We have a deep institutional crisis of uh, democracy. And um, I, in, in this regard, I always remember how I was still a student of economics in South Africa. And I was sitting in the library and I came across a very interesting book. And I opened this book and it was written by some Marxist professor in the 70s. And he was doing research on, on, some, um, on some communities in Malaysia. So very much off the topic, you might think. And he was doing research because in these communities, agricultural communities of Malaysia, um, which had a strong Muslim background, um, there were changes taking place in the place of production. So it was, they had no welfare state, but they had a tradition that when, for example, a family member died, they would go to the landlord and ask for a contribution to bury the family member. And Marxists, Western Marxists at that time, used to look at this very arrogantly, saying, but why don't you raise issues of land reform? Why are you appealing to the landlord to be a better Muslim by um, providing you with money? Why don't you fight for a true uh, welfare state or something like that? And so this professor went there to live with this community and he conducted interviews with those people. And he got very interesting results. 
because when he interviewed them, many of them said, yeah, we have ideas about land reform. We are very aware that there's another society out there, but we have to solve a very pragmatic problem. We have to bury a family member, and we can't wait until socialism arrives. So we will appeal to the dominant code of conduct. Um, that is religion. You're a bad Muslim as a landlord if you don't support the poor. What does this teach us? I think it teaches us that we have to start, um, we have to start in the confrontation with people not by saying um, they are not prepared to carry left ideas or whatsoever, but we have to start by, by being a force that first of all tackles um, the real life problems in the present. And this is no, this is no statement to argue for a reformist uh, agenda or something like that. To the contrary, I think that the weakness of the left in Europe has very much to do with the confusion we inherited after 1990 and we started to engage in very postmodern dialogues about, um, uh, about whether workers still exist or whether there's still a class conflict or something like that. And I think we should rather try to be in the true sense um, a populist or a popular force. I think this is very important and this is the true lesson that we can draw even from the success of Syriza um, because I think the real change that has occurred is not the, 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 the conflict between capital labor has never vanished. It's different, certainly. We don't have any more workers that fill the fabrics at nine o'clock in the morning and at five o'clock they go out and then afterwards they meet in some worker sports club, there is no collective space anymore in our society. So now we have workers that sit in front of a computer, that sit in front of, uh, that sit at home, others that are unemployed, and so there is no sphere of collective dialogue anymore in the public. And I think it's the task of the left, and that is the true lesson from the demonstration in the public squares, that we have to go again back to the life of the workplace, we have to go um, to the districts where those people live that we left, uh, that we that we lost for the project of the left. That's that's one lesson I want to draw. Secondly, I think that uh, if we look at the um, if we look at the issue of democracy, I think for the German left it was very important when when we were found that we 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 made the claim that we are a movement for the reconstruction of democracy. Why? Because I have already raised the question, did the popolo della sinistra, has it vanished? No. If you look at opinion polls in Germany, you will find that most of the issues the German left has raised have a broad majority in the population. A majority of the German population refused the war in Afghanistan. A majority of the population was against the Schroeder labor market reforms, the wage cuts, the privatization of the pension system, but it didn't materialize in any broad movement for the left. So at the essence of this lies the fact that maybe in the post-war post era, there was one experience for the majority of the people in Europe that capitalism can go along with improvement in living standards. But if we look now at history in, 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 in longer time frames, we have to say this was a very exceptional, a very exceptional time frame, time period. Because in 30 years or more, um, we see again the true face of capitalism emerging and there's a constant and permanent conflict between democracy and capitalism. Because permanently, despite free elections, decisions are taken against the interest of the majority of the people. And so I think the left can only have success if it reminds itself to be a force for the reconstruction of democracy and speaking the truth to power and um, arguing 
concentrating on those issues which are of major interest for the majority of the people. And for the majority of the people, they are not interested in our postmodern theories. Also, they are very nice to discuss. But certainly, they are interested um, in, in the material conditions of their life. And I think that uh, we have very much lost, after the 1990s, um, the attachment to these true questions, daily life questions uh, that have concerned people. And as long as we, we focused on these issues, even in the German left, we were quite successful. And when we started to solve, to try to solve our internal divisions on, on theories, on concepts, on strategies, um, then we started uh, to, to lose touch with those we claim to represent. Thirdly, and then um, I try to come to an end, I think certainly the conflict uh, between uh, capital and labor is also still very important to understand what happened with the Euro crisis. Because many people, if they talk about the Euro crisis, they focus on questions of the Euro and other things. But I think we have to take a broader look. What really happened in Europe is that since the 1970s, the end of the 1970s, we could see in all industrialized economies a development that the share of wages in national income has dropped at the expense of labor, and the share of profits has gone down. And this creates a problem, even in capitalism, because people don't have money to spend and buy these goods. So what are the two <coughs> escape routes in capitalism to this problem? One is for the German economy, it was to export to other economies. But for the peripheral economies, the escape route was credit. And this, this system, this dialectic, has broken down with the Euro crisis. And I think it's very important for us to understand that there is no dynamic that can reconstruct the system. It does not work anymore. Um, as it did before. And this tells us then that maybe we are facing, with the prolongation of these old policies, a long period of stagnation and crisis in Europe. And hence, I think that um, the question of redistribution is certainly, apart from all the technical questions in the Euro crisis, the core questions uh, we have uh, to face. And um, hence, I believe that uh, many of the symptoms we see now in, in Europe, um, we can also conceptualize with reference um, to Berlinguer, because my grandfather in Italy, he was a partisan during the Second World War. And um, I remember that, that like his active work in life he spent during the 60s, during the 70s, exactly during the period where, where he, he felt some improvement in his own living conditions. And he had a very positive outlook on European integration. And before he died in the last years, whenever I came to Italy, he told me whatever problem there was, that his soccer club lost, or the weather was bad, or the harvest was bad, had to do for him with either the Euro um, or the development of the European Union. And he became very, very skeptical about the whole project. And I think this, if, if somebody with the history of my, my grandfather, who was very idealistic about this project, um, has become so pessimistic and maybe has even disentrenched from the historical left in Italy, then um, I think we have to ask ourselves whether we are still raising the right questions in relation to Europe. And as Bellinger said, uh, he didn't want an American Europe, he didn't want a Soviet Europe, but today we have to address the issue that we don't want a German Europe as well, um, dictated by these policies. And hence, I think, while I completely subscribe to the idea that there's no return to the 
um, Europa de la Patria. This is certainly no escape route. However, it would be equally, equally wrong to sacrifice a criticism of the European institutions and the sense that people feel that um, the, the European integration has deprived them of their right um, to sovereignty and democracy. Because certainly the construction of the federal Europe has also been a tool for Germany now to dominate through these federal institutions and to remove democratic decisions from the people because not, not everyone can buy a train ticket to Brussels to demonstrate. We have no uh, TV debates in the European Parliament about the big questions that, uh, that concern people. We still have them to some degree also in the member states and that's why I, I, I completely agree with Eleonora that we have to have a coordinated approach in Europe to our struggles, but we also have to have um, a diversity of strategies that are responding to the needs of our people. If we were to start a demonstration in Germany against austerity, raising flags, it would be a little bit like in the movie of Charlie Chaplin. I don't know if you know that movie of Charlie Chaplin where he sees uh, a construction vehicle coming down the road and it has a red flag and the red flag falls down and he picks up the red flag and he walks, continues to walk with the red flag because he wants to bring it back to the construction vehicle and by chance a few workers come from the lunch break around the corner and they think he's the leader of a communist demonstration and they start to follow him. This is pure accidental but um, this won't happen in Germany if you concentrate just on the question, for example, of austerity, but in Greece, certainly, it is the primary question. In Germany, we had to explain to the people that they didn't pay for the Greek pension here, they didn't pay for the Greek worker, but indeed, they paid for the German and French banks, which had lent to Greece to cover up the wrong system of distribution, which has led countries like Germany to export and other countries to take up credit. So I think um, my core message for today is if we want to remind us of the tradition of Berlinguer, we should remind us of the concept of Gramsci, of hegemony, um, focusing on the core social questions um, and on a broad-based movement. And this does not mean we must construct a movement which thinks we are some avant-garde, uh, it must not be elitist movement, it must be a movement focused on the daily questions of democracy and um, try um, to reach those who have um, disentrenched from democracy and um, who, who did turn their back on the left, not because they are not open anymore for the left answers, but because the left has turned their back on them. Thank you very much.